So this is part five of the Buddha Dharma series. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the last three aspects of the Eightfold Path, which is effort, mindfulness, and meditation. So effort. As we've been going through this uh, Eightfold Path, we've been looking at skillful ways to act. So having skillful intentions, having uh, skillful actions with our body and skillful speech. So body, speech and mind. So we've been looking at the skillful parts of that. So now we need to put in the effort to ensure that we're working and building on the skillful parts and we're trying to overcome and let go of our unskillful actions. Of course, you know, we're human beings, so some of our actions are going to be skillful, some of our actions are going to be unskillful. So let's look at the unskillful parts at the moment. So what we need to do is put in the effort to avoid doing unskillful acts. So we can do this by ensuring that for the most part, we keep our minds focused on whatever we're doing, on the present moment. When we allow our minds to just wander off or they, we just become working from old patterns and habits, then we kind of lose control because we're not working from our conscious mind. So we need to ensure that we work as much as we can from our conscious mind and ensure that we avoid any unskillful actions. So unskillful actions are actions that are going to harm you and they're going to harm other people. Or if they're not harming them, then maybe they're not very helpful to anybody. So the first effort we really need to put in is to avoid these. If we are already doing some unskillful actions, then we need to put in the effort to overcome them. So we need to decide for ourselves, which of the actions that I do that are actually unskillful and not helpful and really not too kind. Be honest with yourself. Because when we realize what actions we're doing that are unskillful, then we can put in the effort to overcome them. So the first part of effort is we have to put in the effort to avoid doing unskillful, harmful and unwise actions. And the second part of it is that if we are already doing some of those actions, we have to put in the effort to overcome them. Remember, if we don't put in effort, then you know, we're not going to get any result. It's not just on the Eightfold Path, it's in life, isn't it? You know, if you're studying at school, if you don't study, you don't put in the effort to study, then you're probably not going to pass your exams. If you don't put in the effort to do your best work, then you're probably going to end up losing your job. So we always have to put in effort. You know, when you're learning new skills, we put in a lot of effort so we can learn that new skill. So the first part of the effort is the effort to avoid and overcome unskillful actions. The second part of it is skillful actions. So if we are doing skillful uh, actions, then great, we need to maintain those. So again, look at uh, your actions. So when you have chance to sit quietly or reflect or maybe do a meditation, just look at your daily actions and of course this is a great thing to do at the end of each day to just sit quietly and reflect back over the day and see what actions have been skillful and what actions have been unskillful because once you realize these are my uh, unskillful ones then you can try to overcome them or try to avoid them and for the skillful ones we still have to put in the effort to maintain these skillful ones. Just because you've done a skillful act once, it doesn't mean you're always going to do it. 
So when you're doing a daily review or you're in a meditation session and you're looking at your skillful acts, then look at the ones that you do that you need to maintain. And the ones that you don't do, then they're the ones we need to develop. We need to put in the effort to develop these skills. So, you know, the whole of the Eightfold Path is trying to help us be the best possible person we can be. It is trying to give us the tools so we have a, a life where we're compassionate, where we're kind, where we're helping people, or at least we're not harming people. And so we need to put in the effort there. It doesn't necessarily come naturally. Not all skillful acts come naturally. Some we have to try really hard to do. And so we need to be putting in the effort to look at what my actions are that are skillful and what the actions that are unskillful and avoid and overcome the unskillful ones and develop and maintain the skillful ones. If you constantly keep checking when you're doing a meditation practice or you're doing a daily review practice, you keep checking of what is skillful, what is unskillful. In that way, you're going to change, but it takes effort and the whole of the Eightfold Path takes effort, but the rewards are huge. The rewards are going to help you live a life where it's less emotional, psychological suffering for you and for other people. So putting in the effort may seem hard work, but the benefit is just so enormous that it's really worth putting in the hard work there. So the next part of the Eightfold Path, part seven, is mindfulness. So in mindfulness, mindfulness started with the four foundations of mindfulness. And that teaching I'm going to be doing in the next episode. Today, I just want to generally talk about mindfulness because mindfulness has become a real buzzword. And everybody's in mindfulness this, mindfulness that. And, you know, even for me, it's starting to get on my nerves a little bit about mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. And particularly when it's being misunderstood or even worse, misused. So mindfulness was never meant to be a standalone practice. It was always uh, taught in what we call the three basic paths, which is ethics, awareness, and wisdom. So it shouldn't be taken out of the context of these three. It should have the ethics, it should have the awareness, and it should have the wisdom. But a lot of this mindfulness that's being taught now just focuses on the awareness. So you're told, use your breath, and bring yourself back into the present moment. Use your senses and bring yourself back into the present moment. Or use your body, check in with your body and bring yourself back into the present moment. Okay, so far that's good advice. Now what do we do? And what this modern uh, mindfulness movement is telling us is when you've brought yourself back, don't judge. The problem there is if we're not going to judge, then how are we going to change? Say I was doing unskillful acts and I bring myself back into the present moment. So maybe it's uh, from my unconscious mind or from a habit or behavior that I'm doing unskillful act. And then I realize my mind has gone off and I just take a few deep breaths or I just use any of my senses or check in with my body and I bring myself back into the present moment. But I don't judge. So if I'm not going to judge, then how am I ever going to grow and change? How am I ever going to put in the effort to do skillful actions? If I'm not going to judge that my actions are not good, not skillful, not helpful actions. So I agree that we can use all of these things, the breath, the senses and the body to bring ourselves back into the present moment. But when we're in that present moment, we need to be doing something. We need to be doing a practice that is going to encapsulate the whole of these three um, basic paths, ethics, 
awareness and wisdom. So by bringing yourself back to the present moment, you're already starting to use the second one, the awareness. Good. But where's the ethics? Where's the wisdom if you're not going to judge? Remember, a burglar breaking into your house is going to be mindful. He's going to be making sure he doesn't make any noise. He doesn't disturb anybody because he wants to steal things from your house. So he's being mindful, he has that awareness, but he doesn't have ethics and he doesn't have the wisdom. So the practice I want to talk about now is a practice that uh, I wrote myself, which is called AWARE. So AWARE stands for Attention, Why, Assess, rea uh, Reality and Examine. So let's just look at that. So, just imagine that you've used any of those three breath, body, senses and brought yourself into the present moment. Now, you need to, A, attention. You need to bring your full attention to what is going on. Your full attention to what are you doing. Your full attention to your thought process at the moment. Your full attention to your emotions. Then the W, why? So then you need to look, why am I doing this? What is my intention for acting this way? What is my motivation for acting this way? So you see, now I'm starting to, to look, I'm starting to dissect a little bit of wisdom here. I'm looking at why, why am I doing these things? So I'm getting a little bit of wisdom there. Then we need to assess the situation. Is what I'm doing ethical? Is it skillful? Is it helpful? Or is it unskillful? And is it harmful? So we need to assess that because this is now where we're going to bring in the ethic part of it, where we're going to look and you know assess the whole situation and see if I'm being um, ethical at all. Then the R of aware is reality. Is the way I am acting based in any sort of reality or am I catastrophizing or generalizing? Have I let my imagination just go off? You know a lot of time our anxiety and stress is caused by that, allowing our minds to go off. We have a thought and now we're in the pandemic, we have a thought of, oh, I'm going to catch COVID-19. So if you catch that thought and you think, no, I'm washing my hands regularly, I always wear a mask, I social distance, I'm not meeting large groups of people. So you can let that thought go because you're doing your best not to do it. But if you allow that thought to come and then you build on that thought, so you think, oh no, yeah, if I'm going to get COVID-19, oh, and then I'm going to go to hospital, oh, I could lose my job, or oh, I could infect my family, or oh, I could die. All of that, you're allowing your mind to go away from what is reality and go into some sort of catastrophizing and generalizing world, fantasy world. And of course, then, that's when we start to become anxious and fearful. So the R part of the aware practice is looking to see what I'm doing. Is it based in any sort of reality or am I just letting my mind go wild? And the final part, the E of the aware, is examine. So now we can examine a better way to be. Now I understand you know, I've looked at the ethical side of it, I've looked at the wisdom, I know why, I've seen why I'm doing it, I've looked at my motivation, I've looked at is it in reality. So now, what is a better way for me to be acting? So we examine a better way. So instead of just breathing or using senses or body and bringing ourselves back into the present moment and then not judging and doing anything, we become mindful, we use the aware practice, we go through and we check off 
the ethical part, the awareness part and the wisdom part. This is mindfulness. This is where we can learn. This is where we can grow and where we can change and where we can ensure that our actions are going to be skillful. If we are just not going to judge, then that's going to make us not be able to grow, not be able to change. And quite frankly, you're going to start to lose your empathy and your compassion. So in the next uh, episode, I'm going to talk about the four foundations of mindfulness. But today I just wanted to put this point of view across that don't just bring yourself back and not judge. Bring yourself back, use the aware practice, gain something from this experience so you can change, you can grow and your actions can be skillful. So the last part of the Eightfold Path is meditation. So there are many, many different sorts of meditation. But first of all, we have to learn how to meditate. So many people jump into so many different forms of meditation. Like <clears throat> they'll go straight off to uh, Goanka and do a 10 day Vipassana course. And then on the second day have to leave because they can't cope. You know, meditation is a skill. You have to start at the beginning. You have to take little baby steps and you have to grow. If you jump in to, you know, the Vipassana 10 day Vipassana course, or if you just go into what some people think is higher type of meditation and you've never learned the basics of meditation then it's not going to last and if it does last it could well be taking you down the wrong path so we need to start at the beginning we need to start at the basics get your basics right and then after you've got them right then you can go into any sort of vipassana insight analytical type of meditation i mean and of course we could we need to once we've got the basics we need to be looking at the insight you know insight into ourselves and analyzing ourselves so we need to do that but first of all we need to start off with either what's called calm abiding meditation or the anapanasati <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we are watching our breath. You think, okay, it's simple. Anybody can watch their breath. But of course, whenever we stop and sit quietly to watch our breath, then of course, the mind goes off somewhere. We start thinking. So this is where many people say to me, I can't meditate. I've tried, but I get too many thoughts. Those thoughts are part and parcel of meditation. What we are trying to do with this Anapanasati, the calm abiding meditation, is to teach our mind to stay single pointedly on one thing. So the one thing here is the breath. So we want the mind to stay single pointedly on that breath. We start to think. Once we realize we th we're thinking, that becomes a moment of awareness now. Now I'm aware, oh, I'm thinking. So now we gently come back to our point of meditation, watching the breath. Again, we get uh, another thought come. We know, we realize, I'm thinking. We come back. The more that you keep coming back, the more you are training your mind to stay single focused on one thing, the breath. So obviously in meditation, the first thing you're going to learn is patience because you're and now I'm thinking, now I'm breathing, or now I'm thinking again, or now I'm breathing. Don't think of those thoughts of stopping you do your meditation. They're all part and parcel of that meditation. They're giving your mind time to train itself to keep coming back. What happens now is like I just said, a thought comes into our head and then we build stories around it and then we become anxious. The thoughts come and we chase after every thought. Emotions come and we get all tangled up in these emotions. And we get pain and we get all tangled up in that pain. So at the moment, whatever happens, 
we don't bring ourselves back. We just allow ourselves to be pulled along by whatever direction the mind wants to take us. So when those thoughts are coming, what we're doing, we're teaching the mind, we don't have to be chasing after every thought. Okay, I'm now thinking, I'm coming back. I'm watching my breath. What you're doing here is you're training your mind to just focus on one thing. That is a, such a huge skill, not just in meditation, but once you've learned that skill, whatever you're doing, reading a book, driving your car, at work, you can be focused. There can be lots of things going on over here, but they don't distract you because you are focused. So we're training our mind to stay focused. Once we've trained our mind to become focused like that, then we can go and then we can do analytical and insight or vipassana meditation. But until, until you've learned that skill, then you'll never be able to do those properly. Because if you sit down to do analytical meditation and you start analyzing, and which means you start looking and, and thinking, and then you're thinking about this, and next minute you're thinking about this, and now you're thinking about this, and now you're thinking about that. And before you know it, you've gone off. You started off at A and now you're somewhere near Z. So you need to learn how to focus your awareness on one thing. And that's how we should be starting to do our meditation practice, to learn how to meditate first. First, we need to learn how to walk before we can run. So we need to learn how to just stay focused on the breath. The other point of staying focused on the breath means that it's slowing your brain waves down. So the more you keep bringing yourself back and relaxing and just watching the breath and okay, we're going off, we're coming back, we're watching the breath. The more that you do this, the more that those brain waves will slow down. The more they slow down, the less thoughts you're going to get. So don't see the thoughts as stopping you doing meditation. See those thoughts as all part and parcel of meditation. So what I believe to be the most skillful way to learn meditation is first of all to learn calm abiding or anapanasati type of meditation, watching your breath. Now, I would encourage you, if you're first starting out doing meditation, to find a meditation group. Because sometimes meditation, we get all confused and I start getting funny feelings in my head and I can't start getting heat here and my body feels funny. And then, of course, we can't find in a book why that is. Then we think, oh, I'm doing it wrong. And so then you stop doing it. So what I would encourage you to do is go and find a meditation group and learn how to meditate, first of all, in a group. It's a lot easier to learn in a group. Then once you're starting to learn, you can be meditating on your own and eventually you can just do your meditation on your own. But to begin with, my advice for you is that start doing meditation in a group. Start by learning how to single pointedly focus on one thing when you've done that you can do whatever you like in your meditation your vipassanas your kundalinis your third eye chakras whatever you want to do but you can't start there you have to come back you have to learn from the beginning how to focus so this is the eightfold path Many, many people these days think that the Four Noble Truths with their Eightfold Path are just the basic teaching. Yeah, yeah, I've got it and I can recite. Yeah, it's, you know, this intentions and views and body. And, and then they think, now let's get on to something else. So the Eightfold Path is a lifetime practice. It isn't something that you can recite. It isn't something that you need to just learn and keep in the back of your mind. It is something you need to study. You need to understand 
and by understand I mean if you have any doubts you ask questions clear those questions up and then you implement it the four noble truths and the eightfold path are, have no use whatsoever unless you are going to implement them into your life if you just recite them and I know many monks do this they just recite the the sutra every day and then they go out and get jealous and pride and anger and all those things what's the point the point isn't that I can recite it off by heart the point is that I implement it and it's the same for all of us we need to study these four noble truths we need to understand them fully and we need to implement them and not just implement them at the beginning we need to be implementing them all the way through our lives I cannot believe that you'll come to a point where you've done absolutely everything and everything is perfect on the Eightfold Path the more that you follow this uh, Four Noble Truth and Eightfold Path the more that you'll let go of that suffering that emotional psychological suffering that we all have and once you start letting go of that your mind will open up and it'll open up to so much more but at the moment our minds are being closed by the way we act the way we think the way we behave so don't see these uh, four noble truths and eightfold path as something very basic uh, it was buddha's first teaching leave it leave it really you could spend your whole life doing this practice and what a great life you would have and what a great person you'll be for everybody else so that brings us to the end of the four noble truths and the eightfold path